Night vision. Night vision accessories. Helmets. Devices. IR. Lasers. Mounts. All exorbitantly expensive. Price prohibitive. So a lot of people try and save money where they can. The thing that is hanging the $3,000 plus object off of your forehead might not be something you want to skimp out on. But this Argus mount from Nocturnal Tendencies might just be a Wilcox for a third or a quarter of the price. Stay tuned. So I first heard about this thing uh, from watching Spiritus Systems' YouTube channel. And a uh, huge shout out to them. If you don't know who they are, go check them out. They're all over social media. Uh, follow their YouTube channel. Subscribe to them for sure. Watch all their videos. Excellent, excellent content. There's a wealth of information there. And it's free. Um, but one of their night vision setup videos or whatever, they were talking about these Argus mounts. And uh, I don't know exactly who in their team room is running it, but uh, somebody is running one of these on their helmet and if it's a spiritist systems dude those dudes seem to be pretty squared away and know what they're doing know what they're talking about so if they're running it it's got to be halfway decent right um i'd probably have to say so and uh, as you're seeing it if you're familiar with night vision or night vision mounts whatsoever this looks exactly like a wilcox and uh, a wilcox like this will run you four to six hundred dollars depending on which one you get I honestly don't know the different model numbers and, you know, the differences between them because I never really planned on spending that much on a mount. This Argus, however, is uh, basically, for all intents and purposes, and from all the research that I've done, everything that I've seen, this is a Wilcox, but it's 150 bucks. It's got all the exact same feature set and uh, actually in most cases has a tighter lockup, better structural integrity and build quality as far as the consistency, the tightness, the lack of wobble. 150 bucks gets you every single thing a Wilcox gives you. A third, a quarter of the price, but even more skeletonized and more lightweight, made with quality aluminum. The fit and finish, the machining, it looks impeccable to me. Everything functions exactly as it does on the real deal, and I don't know that this is necessarily a clone. Of course it's a clone, right? But um, it's basically it. It's basically it. it. This is not China Airsoft quality kit. This is real deal kit from everything I'm seeing, experiencing, and everything I've seen in my own independent research. Um, this is real deal, and it's saving you money, which means more ammo, more mags, more training, more supplemental kit to finish building out that helmet or whatever it may be. I don't know. Let's dive a little deeper. And in order to progress on that deep dive, we must take a look at where we've come from and uh, where we still are because uh, this is a real deal, Nerodos Rhino Mount. There's the cage code, all the information, all that stuff. So this is real deal equipment. You can get this on TMVC as well as many other places, but I bought this one from TMVC for like 178 bucks. And while it is old school, and uh, not, you know, the latest and greatest, most high-speed, low-drag thing. It's the real deal. It's going to work. It's a simple mechanism. It's proven. It's reliable. It's durable. And I could feel comfortable hanging a $3,000 tube off the front of my face knowing that this is going to hold. Speaking of that $3,000 tube, uh, let's take a look at it. So this is, you know, again, an older school way of mounting night vision. It's a Rhino, but typically with a PVS-14, this is one of the more affordable ways to do it because it was usually either this or Wilcox. But now that Argus is in the game, um, we'll see. 
we'll see indeed. But this still might overall be a cheaper option um, because a J-Arm, a real surplus J-Arm is like 30 to 50 bucks, whatever. And uh, then you can get this for, you know, a buck 80 basically. You've already got your PVS-14 and then this is your standard bayonet mount. You got this little tooth in there that clamps and then the, uh, the little retaining ledge there and you basically clip it in, make sure it's, it's stuck on there and you're good to go, okay? You can change the distance for your inner pupillary distance. This goes up and down and articulates to fit it properly to your eye and you know whatever on your helmet. And uh, it swings up and then that's why they call it a rhino mount because when the knot is up, you look like a rhinoceros. Um, so this is what I've been using and what I will continue to be using for my PVS-14 probably most of the time. I've got a lot of hours on this setup, uh, both with this mount and this device. I'm really liking them. They're working extremely well to Together and uh, it works well with my helmet as well. Everything is locked up really, really tight. That being said, I have acquired a J arm for uh, for the PVS 14, so I can now interface it with the Argus if I want to, and uh, this will attach to this tube much like this J arm does, and uh, I'll be able to run this mount with this arm with this device. So I have that option and that capability now because of this Argus. So again, this is $149, a Wilcox that gives you the same exact function and maybe even lesser build quality is four to $600. These things, while this says Wilcox, it's uh, not a real Wilcox. I got this on Amazon. I don't know, maybe Wilcox sells stuff on Amazon, but this thing was like 70, 80 bucks just for the mount itself. And this has the, uh, the dovetail mount slides in, as you can see here, dovetails in. And then this is your little retaining piece that notches in. And so it locks in and this actually has really solid, sturdy lockup. There is zero play whatsoever. And then in order to release it, push this button up front and it slides right out. So this is the newer school way of doing things. It does lay a little bit flatter towards the helmet and we'll mount these to some helmets here in a second and give you a look at what that looks like. But uh, it does give you a little bit more options in today's day and age. And comparatively speaking, the Rhino from Nerodos, again, this is a real deal piece of equipment. The Argus from Nocturnal Tendencies, I've seen it sold a couple other places as well, all roughly for 150 bucks. Um, this is still considered by people with Wilcox G24's uh, Airsoft kit, even though I think the build quality, the fit and finish, and the performance is far above that. This is not, you know, still a, a name brand mainstream thing, at least as of yet, where this is. So, either way, this is uh, the more modern mounting solution and therefore uh, more modern devices are going to interface and pair with it a lot better. Um, and then of course, obviously, for older school devices like a PVS-14, there are solutions because the real Wilcox J-Arm like this is 200 bucks. This is still in testing, but it was 70 and it's working just fine. So perhaps the moral to the story or the theme of the video is that you don't necessarily have to spend oodles and noodles of dollars uh, to get something that's functional. Now, I mainly picked this up because I wanted to mount my Psyonix Aurora to it. And uh, I was going to do that through this Lions Gear Solutions 3D printed mount. And they only do it... Um, in this configuration which is dovetail and will only work with a Wilcox mount and I figured instead of getting an actual off Amazon airsoft style mount which a lot of those are built pretty well too and can work out and dudes are running airsoft mounts with real night vision devices and you know people have their qualms about that but at the same time with the money you got left after buying the nods sometimes that's all you can afford but this, the Argus, uh, is 150 bucks, and it's cheaper than some of the recommended for real use for real use airsoft units that I've seen people talking about. And uh, this thing again has all the same features as a Wilcox. 
I would arguably say probably the same, if not better, build quality again from just feeling it, touching it, and uh, the lack of play and wobble. Again, this is mostly brand new, so maybe it loosens up a bit over time after hanging devices off of it and this, that, and the third, but all the controls feel very, very tactile and audible and affirmative, and uh, it just locks up nice and compact. And again, bought it, bought this because I wanted to do this, so I could actually usably hang my Psyonix off of a helmet and have it sit flush and proper instead of canted like it does using a traditional J-arm. In fact, this very one right here. It can be done, but because it's a digital device and you're looking through a screen, then the screen is canted. So you can get by with it, even though it's not ideal, um, but you can do it. But this normal way is way better. So this mount from Lions Gear Solution gives me that capability. And of course, not it being not the, f <laughs> the fact that it cannot interface with my Rhino that I have, I did have to get another mount. So let's throw it on there and, and see what we're working with. So slides right into the dovetail. It's locked in there and boom, now I can mount this Psyonix in a normal configuration to any helmet that I want and uh, run it, record it first person, see all the IR lights and lasers and do drills in the dark and record it for content here on YouTube, do comparisons, all types of cool stuff. And also now I have a backup capable night vision monocular that I can hand off to a battle buddy or a loved one or a friend just to go hike in the dark or whatever it may be. So, you know, it's not real night vision it's not a pvs 14 but this thing is actually rather viable especially price considered and this whole package together four or five hundred bucks a little bit less than a hundred bucks 60 70 bucks 150 bucks easily less than a thousand dollars even included a bump helmet from hardhead veterans use the code tt10 uh pinned in the comment section below for uh free shipping less than a thousand bucks you have a complete setup and this Argus mount, as you upgrade from maybe a Psyonix down the line and actually end up picking up a real PVS-14, this mount will work just fine for that as well. And for any other devices, you want to run dual tubes, there's dudes running it off this mount. It's working great, it's holding up, and it's 150 bucks. I don't think you can really go too wrong, people. I really don't. So let's try it on a few different helmets and see how she fits all right so first off we've got the hardhead veterans ate bump and uh slick little setup i'm liking that princeton tech mpls on there this is probably the best admin helmet mounted light you can get and uh, here she is this is an aluminum shroud the ate shroud and uh got a little bit of play a little bit of wobble uh, when i put the rhino in here it doesn't really have any wobble uh, if it does it's very very minimal this is a little bit more noticeable but you'll have that uh, on different shrouds different helmets some more than others and some not at all and uh, you know but that's definitely doable we're down we're using it we're functional um, i could even throw the psionics on here real quick just for an example and boom now uh now you're set up and it's still you know again it's got a little wobble but that's more than doable. You can also bungee in and stabilize the device a little bit. And uh, two, you can shim the mount, of course. So um, you can easily put some ranger bands or some tape or whatever substance back here to create pressure on the mount itself and uh, that will stop it from moving around on you. So that's how it fits the ATE bump from Hardhead Veterans. Again, code TT10 in the comment section below will save you on shipping and uh, make it worth the while and order a bunch of goodies because they make a bunch of goodies. All right, here we go with the Hardhead Veterans Ballistic ATE Gen 2. And again, same mount, aluminum, all that. This one in that sick multicam black. And a uh, huge shout out to 100 Concepts for the candy pouch because that holds my balaclava and all my necessary batteries and all that different stuff. Again, Princeton Tech MPLS. And uh, here is the Argus in the shroud here. It's still got some wobble, still some play. It feels like maybe slightly less play. Um, same thing, bust it down, you're ready to go back up stows it nice and flat a lot flatter than the rhino uh, it's a less bulky device it's a lighter weight device and uh, mounts onto the helmet perfectly fine it's secure it's not going anywhere that little bit of wobble realistically is not going to affect you it won't really be noticeable uh, for the most part and again it can be easily shimmed and taken care of 
with whatever you want to install back there to do so. So at the end of the day, you'll have that with different mounts, real mounts, fake mounts, whatever, uh, different helmets, different shrouds, different devices. And uh, it's just one of the things. It's a normal, common thing. And honestly, it's not even that much play. All right, next helmet. All right, next up we have the Protection Group Denmark Arch Helmet. Uh, big shout out to them as well. They sent this helmet out as well as another one that uh, we were able to shoot and ballistic test. And uh, that video will be out before this one, I'm pretty sure. So if you haven't seen it, make sure you go check it out and then uh, check out Production Group Denmark because they're making some very quality, affordable helmets uh, that we proved were bulletproof. And so here it is in the shroud here. Now the one knock that I have on this helmet uh, is that this shroud is plastic and in any mounts, uh, with any mounts I should say, that I have mounted into this helmet, into this plastic shroud, there has been significant play. This has a a lot more play than the hardhead veteran either the bump or the ballistic and uh, that is due to the mount it just doesn't work well with the rhino mount either i mean it works it works fine it's going to hold it it's not going to go anywhere over time metal on plastic the plastic will become wallowed out and perhaps even sloppier and maybe even not even usable down the line but you know, this is replaceable at least, so I can replace this with an aluminum shroud and then we'll be hunky-dory and hopefully it'll have a little bit of a tighter tolerance than this plastic one here out of the box. But same thing, mounted into the shroud and uh, again, way more wiggle than the other helmets, but still functional, still going to be able to utilize this for either the Psyonix Aurora. Again, we'll slip around there for you real quick because that is how I'm probably going to set this helmet up for the meantime um, to do first person recording in the darkness, you know, with IR lasers, IR illuminators, first person drills in the dark and kind of give you guys a rundown on that and what that looks like. And uh, as well as test out the Argus and uh, the Lions Gear Solution mount and all that. So, you know, it will work for me. It's working. It has been working. It's nothing too crazy. You know, it's a little sloppier in this helmet, but it's not going to fall off. It's still going to do what it needs to do and uh, works for me. So it'll probably work for you. And here we go, folks. The last and final helmet. This is the Botac Long Fry, uh, the cheapest ballistic helmet you can buy, I'm pretty sure, that is actually 3A rated uh, and will stop threats level 3A. Um, this, again, you can find links to all these helmets in the comment section below, as well as to Sonix and other night vision, digital, and analog. So check that out if you're interested. Um, but it's funny that this $199 ballistic helmet with an aluminum shroud, zero, and I mean zero, oh, I'm wobbling the camera, zero wobble or shake or movement is the cheapest helmet. This is the cheapest helmet. It is made in China, 200 bucks, and they have the spec for the mount in the shroud fit perfectly. Um, so that's super cool too. This is actually a pretty cool helmet. This was my first helmet. Uh, this is what I started with. I still think it's an excellent starting helmet. Uh, and even if, you know, this is all you got a budget for and this is the one you stick with till, you know, kingdom come, uh, I think it's an excellent option for that. And uh, of course you can, kit it up with all your accoutrements, everything you need, and uh, have an excellent little setup. Again, you know, here we go. We'll throw the old Psyonix on there for you again, if I could do it the right way. We're in there. So again, whether you're airsofting, milsimming, LARPing, fighting for life and liberty, or all the above, you can get it done for not crazy money. And uh, this Argus from Nocturnal Tendencies actually fits this Botac really, really well. That's super cool. That'll be fun, be a cool little setup. They're all cool little setups. I like this one a lot. This is actually some knockoff TMVC Mohawk. This is made from Crydex. I'll have an individual video on this, as well as comparing it to a real Mohawk, because uh, I just grabbed one of those. But uh, for a budget helmet setup, this thing's pretty sick. I'm liking it, and uh, the Argus is making it real easy to do that, because it's working as intended for everything I need it to, and it was very, very affordable, comparatively speaking. So if you're looking to get into night vision, or you already are into night vision, and you're still rocking a rhino or 
some other fangled proprietary mount or whatever it may be, and you're looking to get a Wilcox, maybe even used, and you've been talking to a bunch of idiots on Instagram back and forth, and half of them are scammers, and the other ones, you know, are asking too much, and, you know, they're sketchy or whatever it is, but you, you just can't spend the money and buy a real one or buy a brand new one at full price, and you just don't want to deal with it. This Argus mount comes highly recommended from a bunch of dudes that know what they're talking about and me. So whatever that's worth, folks, check them out. And uh, if you are not yet looking into acquiring some type of night vision, whether it's digital or analog or some type of thermal, which I guess there's only digital thermal, but some piece of thermal equipment, uh, these are definitely what they would call force multipliers and uh, a significant, significant help when uh, just white light won't do. There's a lot of bad stuff that happens in the dark and you can't shoot what you can't see. That being said, you might want to see what you're shooting but also not be seen. That's where stuff like this comes in. So either way, that's my take on that. I'm going to keep running this mount on all types of different helmets with all types of different apparatus I bolted to it and see how she holds up. Hopefully it doesn't drop any of my nice expensive night vision or thermal devices six feet onto the floor, but I'll have them bungeed up and whatever. Hopefully, hopefully I remember to do that and hopefully it doesn't fail. But again, from everything I've seen and from everything I've experienced so far, I'm impressed, so check all the links pinned in the comment section below as well as in the description box, especially the first three, because those are to help you fight for your God-given, inalienable, constitutionally protected, and reaffirmed, but inherent by birth gun rights. We got to do it, people. We the people. That's us. And that's why it's important to have gear like this. Okay? Like this. Like this. All types of stuff we got to have, right? And know how to use it. And make sure it's squared away and that it works and that it's reliable and that we have the other equipment to back it up and keep it running keep ourselves running beans bullets and band-aids you can't have too many and uh oh yeah don't ever forget <laughs>